Welcome to another episode of Pajama Party Profits. Uh, this is my party. I'm your host, Brenda Trott, the Make Money in Your Sleep girl, and I'm super excited today. We have a special guest who has um, started not one, but multiple million dollar businesses. And as our title has said, she started uh, many from scratch and she has moved on and helps others too. Uh, currently, she has a podcast called The Win. And she will uh, explain a little bit more about that to you as well. But I want you to uh, go ahead and give a warm welcome to Heather Ann. Welcome. Heather Ann Hibwin, hi, how are you? Yay, I, I'm uh, ex excited. I didn't even read your bio here. You are regarded as a top authority on digital marketing, sales, uh, coaching, online publishing, business strategies. Mm -hmm. You've been named the top 50 must follow women entrepreneurs by Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. And you've been named chief sexy boss from your Amazon bestseller book, uh, Sexy Boss, how female entrepreneurship is changing the rule book and beating the big boys and uh, others call you the wizard behind the curtain. Is that the men? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wizard behind the curtain is the men. <laughs> oh. um, I, I, let, can, can we just start there? Because you said something kind of, kind of bold when it comes to uh, niche selection. And maybe not so much, but we're sure. always told that we have to select one type of person that we want to work with. Oftentimes we'll have a photo of them or a drawing of them. And you have in your book at least singled out women. Have you found that to be um, a benefit to you? Have you done that for all of your businesses or was it just mm -hmm. because you had a message for them? Okay, so it's a great question. So what you're discussing is the avatar, right? In the world of avatar and the world of copywriting, picking your avatar. So when I created Sexy Boss, um, the book, it, at the time, the market was to women, and it was because I had a particular message, but I didn't intend to have a business around it. So it was more of I wanted to share my personal story and overcoming failure and overcoming um, embarrassment and overcoming success. It sounds odd. I wanted to share that personal story. And so the someone shared to me once you're, you're kind of like a sexy boss. And what's interesting about that is people all the time say to me, Oh, you focus on women entrepreneurs. And I'm like, I do. I didn't know I did that. That's interesting. So I don't think I do like actually 60% of my clients are men. Um, it's mainly because I don't see the gender side of entrepreneurship. I'm very just, you know, entrepreneur and I'm used to being in a room full of just men you know, so it doesn't like phase me at all necessarily. I think what's happened though, is people have placed me in that box and I'm okay with that. That's fine. Um, but it's interesting because I'm now shifting and saying, I, I really want to make sure that my brand is non-gender. And the reason I'm doing that is because entrepreneurship is across the fold. Am I an empowerment of women? Yes. Hugely. I mean, I'm obviously a huge empower of women. I want more women. I'm constantly saying, Hey, why is there why is there only men in the room? <laughs> you guys need to have some, some, some progesterone in here, dude. But at the same time, you know, I know that uh, it's, it's a male dominated world and I'm always trying to pull women in right to it. At the same time, I also want to make sure that I'm promoting to my clients and my clients usually are uh, men and women who have started their business. I, I have two I have two takeaways from that. And first I, I, I'm giggling a little bit at myself because it's almost as if, you said that entrepreneurs are our own gender and I completely, they are, <laughs> they are, they are their own gender. They're their own <laughs> messed up, screwed up gender. And you know, it's interesting because they really are a niche within themselves, just like coaches and athletes, you know, are too. They have a way of particularly thinking that's different than the average person. I think athletes think differently sometimes than the average person. Entrepreneurs, are constantly thinking outside the box, true entrepreneurs are always thinking outside the box. And so when you have someone who's in the box all the time and they move out of the box, that's the transition from not being an entrepreneur and being an entrepreneur. The challenge with that is more for women than men is that remember when we were growing up, the kid in the back who's like, you know, being the bad kid, you know, doing this or doodling, it's always the guy who's like, being the rebellion 
and the teacher goes crazy and the girls are in the front being the good girl, right? Because we were taught to be good girls and, you know, good girls go forward in life and blah, blah, blah. So it's harder for women, especially when they're older to get, jump out of that box because they've been told at such a young age and they were socially, um, uh, programmed that it's good to be a good girl. And this is wonderful to be a good girl. And, you know, people like nice girls and be sweet and be loving and blah, 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 blah. blah. And that goes in your head. And then I, I just did a video today on IGTV and I named it well-behaved women where rarely make history. And it's true, but I call that rarely, you know, well-behaved men or women really make history. And we're talking in society today with politics where it's pretty crazy. And men or women, whoever is talking, the more outrageous they are, the more exposure they get, right? Kim Kardashian's one, you know, she's doing all kinds of stuff. So the point is, is that on, to be entrepreneur, it's a whole nother mindset. And it is like entertainment for the people because like, how do they do that? How do they get outside the box of that? How are they willing to shake the tree where other people are not? I get that. Um, the other takeaway I had just from that quick introduction, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to avoid a sneeze in a second here, mm -hmm. uh, was that you mentioned that people had put you in this box that your focus, even with your book, your focus was on women. And this is just a major point that I've made when I when I've talked to my clients about uh, about that avatar that we're creating is they think that, oh, if I only talk to this person, I'm going to be excluding everybody else. But you've already proven that wrong because you said your message, at least with that book, was towards women, but 60% of your clients were men. So right. I, I just feel like that's a great example to show people that that's not uh, necessarily a, a truth. Actually, it's kind of a falsehood because you had a clear message. People heard it louder. So yeah. That the other thing um, you're talking about, you know, crazy politics and 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 that type of thing. But um, I know that we we made a draw here. You said, you know, you've you've been able to start these businesses from yeah. almost nothing, um, nothing. Yeah. Right, from nothing, and you've done it more than once. Yes. But you also in your bio are not afraid to tell people that you failed. I so failed <laughs> and what is succeeded. It? Is, it, is it more important to know about how you got there? Or is it more important to know um, why and how you failed? Both, you know, both. How did you get there? What is the success stories with success strategies? And at the same time, each situation is different. The business itself is not a failure. I, and the situation for me didn't work out the best, but I call the whole situation a success, right? Because if we bless each bless each situation or name each situation as a success, then it will be a success. However, you know, I didn't end up on top on the deal. So if I had to give you, you know, people always ask me, what, what are your, what'd you learn? What's your lessons you learned? I mean, there's all kinds of things I learned. There's tons of things. My big thing I've learned is don't trust your business partners for, for knowing the, being your best interest always get a lawyer and always understand it is always a competition. Business is challenging. And that's hard to know when the person, your business partner is your loved one, a family member, someone you love and adore, someone you really admire, a mentor happens to be a mentor. And have, so all of my business partners up to this point have been something like that for me. I trusted them with this particular part of the business called, you know, uh, contracts and, and then those businesses that I helped build today are still viable today. They're still rocking and rolling today because I built such a great foundation that they were able to continually sustain it. Um, so I'm proud of that. At the same time, I was, I'm was i watching a show right now on HBO called Succession. I don't know if you've seen this or not. But it's a great, I saw the um, in the very first episode, it basically, of the main guy and his kids, he's, he's moving his company over to his kids. And he, he just basically told his son, here, sign this. And of course he trusted his dad and signed it. And then found out later, he basically signed his rights away of the entire company. And he's like, why would you do that? Why would you screw me like that kind of thing? And he's like, it's your fault. You didn't get your own lawyer. And that sounds really harsh because it's his father. You know what I mean? But that's business. You know, that's reality. Happened to me three times. So it's, I always say women, get lawyers, get your own lawyer married to him. No problem. Get your own lawyer. I know that sounds harsh, but 
It's reality. So, and you've got to act and talk like a man sometimes and act like that in business or you'll get run over. And that happens every single day in, in business for women specifically because we trust and we want to believe and we trust you and all this thing, those things. But when it comes down to business at the end of the day, business is different. It's very different. Love, See? war, and then business. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just because so you're married doesn't mean... You know, it doesn't mean that everything's okay. Just because you love him doesn't mean it's okay. It just doesn't. It's very different. And men compartmentalize love and money separately. Women coll collide it. Women collide love and money way more. If he loves me, he would never do that. Men are like, oh, I love her. And like business is business, you know? So it's a very different compartmentalization. Um, it's not negative towards men. It's just, I want women to really get that it's not that I'm stupid or dumb. It's just that I trusted and I didn't go get my own lawyer to look at the documents. Okay. So I'm thinking that the people who are watching this show are going to say, oh man, I wish I could have a success to get screwed over with. <laughs> so how, how did you even get started? How did like literally you went from zero? Did you when you say you went from zero, do you really mean that you went to a bank and you got some loans? To I know, I've never gotten a loan for a business in my life. No, no. We started from zero. You have money. You have time. There's, a, there's resources you have. You don't always have money. You have your own time and you have the value in the marketplace and then you have money. It's really freaking easy to build a business with a million dollars in the bank. Freaking easy. That is easy. I mean, seriously, higher, 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 higher. <laughs> when you're it and all you got is a website and you're like, I got time and I got energy and I got something to value in the marketplace that takes a lot more. Right. And I didn't have a, I didn't have a big credit card. Or I didn't have any of that. It was like, Let's go. We just build it. As we go, we self-funded it. I'm not saying that's the best way, but it's what I had at the time. So it's like, you know, you do what you got to do. I'm still like that today. I bootstrap everything, mainly because, uh, yeah, just that's just where I've been at. You know, I'm not one to go to the to the bank and say, oh, yeah, for this internet business idea, will you give me some money? They'd be like, where's the assets? You know? And so there's, and there's venture capital and that's a whole other route. And then there's a whole world there and that's fine too. Um, I've really never played in that world. I'm open to that. But at the same time, I think that you've got to prove the concept. There's a piece of all the businesses you get to prove the concept. Like my last business I was in, we were building it in such a way that we were going to go franchise. Like it was already on that path. We were starting to talk to lawyers. We were starting to talk to what does it look like to take this model and franchise it? But the thing they were asking for is, is there a system structured so that we can hand this over to somebody who's a novice and they can make money? And so we were building that system out and that takes time, you know, and energy and just trial and error before we could go get funding. So an idea is an idea, but you still have to build something to prove the concept, right? So, and you gotta, you gotta do that bootstrap. Perfect. Awesome. And I think that's where most of our viewers are coming from. Uh, and sometimes it's the hard way, you know, so many people come in and tell you, oh, if you just put your money here, you're magically gonna make more. So I, I appreciate that. Right now it's time for our game, but when we come back, you're gonna tell us some of those steps that people can take to even generate that idea that you bootstrapped and then another idea and then another idea. But first I promised you a game and I know you're just like everyone else. You're so happy about this part of my show. <laughs> I found nervous. out. Nervous. <laughs> nervous. I found out that Heather Ann is in Austin yes. and I am in Houston. Yeah. So you got, you got off because I almost did truth or dare, but instead I think we're going to take, I have to get my timer out. We are going to play Battle of the Cities. Okay. So, yeah, you're probably going to win, too, because you've been in Houston, and I have not thought about any of the ideas. Is it completely on the fly, as usual? That's okay. That's fun. <laughs> I'm going to give you 10 seconds to come up with why Austin is better than Houston. Boom. Oh, God, there's a lot. <laughs> Where do I start? I have to concede. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you Rick. ready? Houston cannot beat Austin. Go ahead. All yeah. right, go. Ten seconds. Great Tacos, uh, Barton Springs, Zilker Park, ACL, South by Southwest, 
um, an amazing downtown, uh, better weather, um, a super chill environment, um, easier to get around, uh, healthiest city in the Southwest as well as stop, Texas. Stop, stop, Baloney, healthiest city. It's, it's actually been named that many times. Houston's <laughs> been named fattest next to Pennsylvania. <laughs> No, it has. You haven't seen that? No, I'm not kidding. San Antonio, Houston, and Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, are named fattest, one of the fattest cities in the country. And, yeah. then, and, and we're the one of the fittest, along with San Francisco. No, no, no. San Diego and like some other Orange County. We're named number, it's like top 10 fittest. Okay. I'm, I'm going to actually concede this one, but with the caveat, uh, if you're in Houston or I'm in, 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 Austin. Austin, we're gonna have to do a taco showdown because I'm sure we've got some great street tacos here. Yeah, well, Torchy's Tacos is known here. Franklin Barbecue is world Tor renowned. Torchy's Tacos is not street tacos. Well, it started street tacos. They just now got a <laughs> building. <laughs> Obama came to it. They thought it was great. Well, Franklin Barbecue has been named number one in the country. They're here. That's a taco place, a barbecue. No, barbe no barbecue. No, it's not tacos. It's no, I'm talking barbecue. taco stand. See, because I'm stands. vegan, but I, I miss my tacos, so I okay. would I would stop and, and get. Okay, I could see on the tacos. <laughs> on you, Torchy's tacos. It's well, fine. It's not a waterfront. It's a kind of. In we have what? Say Gav again. Waterfront in Gaveston. Well, we have Barton Springs, and we have Town Lakes, and Lake Travis, and Lake Austin. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, we have Lake Houston, but it's not like in Houston. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not conceding. Please don't write in or yell at me or saying that I, I can see that Austin's better. I'm just saying that Heather's better. Heather Ann is much better. At I was Dallas. born and raised in Houston, so and I have a visceral <laughs> negative connection to it. It's so more part of keeping Austin crazy, right? Keeping Austin weird. Weird, weird. That's right. I forgot to keeping hear. Austin oh. weird. Yeah. So yeah, Austin's Austin. great. And how often do you, okay, I'm not even going to go there. I know that your rules in a certain part of town are much more liberal than. They're very liberal here. <laughs> yeah, we're a very liberal city. Um, but yeah, so I live in Zilker Park, Barton Springs area, which is right in the center of downtown. So I live in the center of everything. Um, I don't live in the burbs, but I used to live in the burbs. So yeah, it's it's a very eclectic, very green city. That's one thing about Houston; it's like very green. Um, and the weather's better. It's not as Whoa. sticky hot. You mean green like there's grass, or do you mean green like we recycle and all that? Because we are one of the greenest cities there are. No, there's a ton of trees. They've done a lot of keeping things you can't build, can't build, can't build. There's a lot of uh, officer, what they call them, aquifers, and areas you can't build. So there's a lot, just a lot of green and hills. Where awesome. you don't see that in Houston, everything's just like, whoop, you know. And yeah, they're, and they're, they're, they're moving yeah. to change that because of all the horrible flooding that we've had. Right. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So back to business, Heather Ann. Thank you for partaking. Heather Heyman went from Houston. That's born and raised, but now, now in Austin. And that all stemmed from you saying, how are you today? And I'm like, it's blithering hot here. It's, it's blithering hot. hot. I grew up in Houston. I remember, like, you go to the mailbox and you come back, like, drenched. You're like, I didn't do anything. Yeah, it's like you walked. It's like that's it's just like this heat that just like sits there like <sighs> yeah. You don't have that in Austin because we have we have hills and the how the wind is, it it gets hot here, but not that sticky hot. You know what I mean? Like that humidity that just like pours over your body hot. You don't have that. We don't have that here. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm dealing with it right now. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, don't, I know what yeah, you mean. Believe me. Born and raised in <laughs> it. I know. After we're done. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's just take the people back for what they what they really want to hear. What kind of steps do you take for it to go from idea, ground zero? You say you're a bootstrapper. I thought that lo I thought that was lost long ago. So what what simple <sighs> pieces of advice can you give people to just get started? to getting it done? Well, the key is to get started, right? The, I have a whole um, article about this, about there's a jump start and there's a get started. Start with what you have. Principle number one, do everything there is to do. Everything there is to do. Even if you're like, well, which exact strategy to work? Do all of them. 
you do all of them and people get overwhelmed. And I'm like, I get that, but do all of them, do all of them. And then from there, you can see what works and doesn't work. Right. But it's do uh, everything there is to do. And then from there, things will kind of show itself of like, what's best for you to do X, Y, Z. So that's what I've had to do as far as knowing that the, these businesses work and the ideas, um, in my, this last one, the weight loss company I was working with, um, or founded, it was an interesting one because at the time my boyfriend's fiance at the time had this product, it was sitting in his like closet and it was a really interesting case study. Cause he pulls it out. He's like, Hey, this thing, like if you lay down, you lose inches off your body. I'm like, whatever. I don't believe you. So I lay down and he did the whole test before and after. And I lost like, I don't know, like three inches. And I'm like, what, why are we not selling the heck out of this? And he's like, I don't know. So, you know, so, you have to brand things. Like I rebranded it. I branded a new name. I branded the company. I brand everything. And then I got a right message to market. I was like, you know, lose two, 10 inches in 30 minutes or less. Boom. We now had literally, there was a point at the business when we first started, we had a three and a half month waiting list. People call and go, I want an appointment. They're like, Oh, we have one like three and a half months. Like what? You know? So, and then things started to, you know, taper off and getting more normalized. But at the same time, why did it go from nothing in his closet making zero money to that? And we went to 1.5 million sales in 18 months. The reason is because we shifted the message. I created the new message to market. So just because you have an idea doesn't mean the marketplace values that idea. So you have to make sure you have something that it's, it's a fit with the value in the marketplace. What does the marketplace want? And what are people going towards more and more and more and more and more is simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. It's also, we call laziness, 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 right? Anything to make things easier for us. Uber, right? Huge, huge one. Uh, lay down, lose weight, do nothing, check mark, you know, anything that's going to create space or time for people so that they can do whatever they want. And there's always two things that people buy. And I go through this with my clients and this right here, I'm going to tell you it's worth $25,000, not a million dollars. There's only two things people buy Two on anything, anything. They buy two things, confidence and hope. You go into Sephora and make yourself beautiful confidence and hope. You go into target and buy whatever confidence and hope you buy a weight loss thing, confidence and hope you buy a product on how to build a business on Instagram confidence and hope. You're always buying confidence and hope. And so you want to make sure your product and service is selling confidence and hope. And that's a key piece. And if you don't do that, people, when I say, when I ask my clients, what, what are the people buying? They're like, bleh, 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 benefit, benefit, feature, 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 I'm like blah, 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 blah. What are they buying? And we sometimes go round and round for 45 minutes and they get so frustrated. And I'm like, there's buying confidence and hope. Are you selling confidence and hope? Are you emulating confidence and hope? No. Okay. Well, that's why they're not buying. So making sure that market and message isn't consistent with what people really want, which is confidence and hope. That is awesome. Heather Ann, we are um, just about out of time. And sure. I know that you've only like just wet the whistle of people <laughs> that want to know more. So we're where can they, first i want to remind you that if this is your first time seeing us you want to make sure that you hit the subscribe button click the bell so you get notifications you know when i'm live this is an off day or usually on different days so you never know when i'm going to be live with someone who can help you with your stuff so click and subscribe but uh heather ann please tell us where they can find out more about you and if i can uh grab a link or not to the article that you explained so we can put that in our show notes as well at pajamapartyprofits.com Oh, awesome. Thank you. So it's heatherhavenwood.com. And um, you can go to also askheatherann.com. That's actually my chat bot where I can just talk to you directly. Um, askheatherann.com or um, heatherhavenwood.com. And I'll have to go find the link of that article. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done a lot of shows and a lot of articles. So who knows, but I do a lot of my articles on LinkedIn, actually. Okay. So I'm um, heather on linkedin.com. It goes right to my LinkedIn page. Follow me there because that's why I do a lot of videos and I do a lot of daily things. Like today I did my video on, you know, well-behaved women and men rarely make history. So go check that out. Great. We will. Thank you so much, Heather. You have a wonder, Heather Ann. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> and 
I, I'm still going to take you up on that taco thing. Yes. Come on <laughs> down. Torchy's Taco. Bring your tacos. We'll have a taco standoff. All right. That's good. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.